There has never been a better or more important time to direct energy, creative problem solving, and innovation toward our world's lakes, rivers, and one big shared ocean. With over 3 billion people dependent on marine and coastal biodiversity for their livelihood, developing a sustainable blue economy that protects the economic, security, and environmental benefits of our waterways is key. Welcome to Fundamentals of Climate Smart Entrepreneurship. This course will provide entrepreneurs with recommendations for planning, implementing, and running sustainable climate smart businesses. Those businesses responsibly manage natural resources, reduce their negative contributions to the climate crisis, respect indigenous lands and ways of life, and are profitable. This lesson is entrepreneurship in the blue economy. In this lesson, we will define the blue economy. We will examine why the blue economy is important to preserving the planet and its creatures in the near and long term. We will also review how basic entrepreneurship applies to blue businesses. This is all with the aim of mitigating the climate crisis. This lesson was written by Rachel Zoe Miller, the founder of Rosalia Project for a Clean Ocean. She is an expedition scientist, inventor, National Geographic Explorer, Explorers Club Fellow, and co-inventor of the Cora Ball, the world's first microfiber catching laundry ball. Rachel leads teams on expeditions whose scientific results are published in peer-reviewed journals. She captains the American Promise, a 60-foot sailing research vessel. She has certified hundreds of people to be sailing instructors and mentors young scientists at the New York Harbor School. Her academic background is in marine studies and underwater archaeology. According to the World Bank, the blue economy is the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, improved livelihoods, and jobs while preserving the health of ocean ecosystems. Talking about the blue economy as its own category, separate from other focus areas, is timely and urgent if we are to preserve this planet and its creatures in the near and long term. Radical Interdisciplinarity To start, it is best to always think about our public waterways and our ocean as systems. Systems are complex and require a breadth of expertise. So for those who are interested in the blue economy but lack specific knowledge about the ocean, do not let that stop you. Your skills and creativity can be matched with people who are specific marine aquatic experts while you bring your big ideas, innovation, and new perspectives to the table. Miller and her team had been working on the problem of marine debris through their non-governmental organization, Rosalia Project for a Clean Ocean, for two years when they learned about the problem of microfiber pollution. When our clothes and other textiles break into microscopic bits of fiber that end up in the environment, including our waterways. This problem didn't just speak to the team at the Rosalia Project, it screamed at them and they knew they had to address it. At that point, Miller and her team set three goals. To contribute to the, at the time, scant scientific knowledge about the problem, to come up with a solution, and to spread the word to make sure as many people from as many professional backgrounds and industries learned about microfiber pollution so they could apply their skills and knowledge to finding a solution. They developed the Cora Ball. The Cora Ball is placed into washing machines to entangle microfibers. It reduces the amount of fiber that breaks off of our clothes, helping clothes to last longer, and protecting our lakes, rivers, and ocean. Miller has given hundreds of presentations, podcast interviews, and more in order to spread the word. The group had incredible support for the initial research and development on the Cora Ball in the form of a grant from Schmidt Marine Technology Partners. The most important enabling technology for the product development was 3D printing, which allowed for faster iteration. Once they were ready with their minimum viable product to take to the next level, they created a separate company to preserve the nonprofit status of the Rosalia Project. They did a Kickstarter campaign for molds and a first production run. 
The campaign went 3,500% above goal. Thanks to their backers, they made 15,000 core balls right out of the gate, which set them up to launch online sales the next year. They've been selling through their own site and with retail partners worldwide for five years, giving a percentage of gross sales back to the Rosalia project every quarter. One of the biggest takeaways Miller has from the experience of bringing the Coraball to market is that the final product details took far longer to figure out than expected. Another big takeaway was how critically important the relationships they have with suppliers throughout their supply chain are to the success of the product and the company. Their experience at Coraball and the Rosalia project has been that using what the Massachusetts Institute of Technology calls Radical interdisciplinarity sets the foundation for creating scalable, resilient blue businesses, says Miller. This means embracing diverse diversity, engaging with people from a wide swath of professional and academic disciplines, people from different generations, upbringings, different community structures, and from all over the world. This is something to remember when thinking about entering the blue economy. While in the big picture, it is about solving problems related to our public waterways and the ocean, in its parts, the skills needed are the same skills used to solve any other complex problem. Engineering, chemistry, math, design, strategy, messaging, interacting with governmental regulations and policy, and so much more. Some things to ask yourself as you develop a business in the blue economy are the same as an entrepreneur for any other business. What is the necessary environment to promote the development of your business? How do you raise funding for a blue business? What skills are necessary and how do you recruit employees for your blue business? And what are best practices for creating scalable, resilient blue businesses? Feedback and failure. The front end of any project, whether that is inventing a new thing, starting a new business, or taking on a new role, always requires iteration. That means doing something, assessing performance, making adjustments, and doing it again. There are two key elements to this process. One is recognizing that in this context, failure is just another term for iteration. So be prepared for your ideas to fail and embrace the opportunity to learn from those attempts. And the other is that proper feedback is golden. One of the most valuable people you can have on your team or as an advisor is someone you trust who, along with you and your team, can observe, assess, and give specific and constructive feedback. This is how you learn and how you move forward with anything new. People, planet, profit. For the blue economy to achieve its goals of protecting our precious waterways, all of the stakeholders, including inventors, executives, customers, investors, activists, and governments must make decisions with the focus on people, planet, and profit in that order. This mindset sets up businesses that treat employees fairly, pay attention to their own footprint from product design to packaging to fulfillment, and also pay attention to the numbers. We need blue businesses to thrive, which means there must be profit. Profit just can't be the only criterion for making decisions. The ocean and the lakes and rivers that feed it need you. The challenges are many, but change is possible. Young people worldwide are bringing their considerable intelligence and creativity to these problems and there is more and more training, advisory, and financial support. The opportunities are there. It is just a matter of diving in. For more on this course and to access related resources, visit our website.